Uh, my name is Luca Busetto. I, uh, I am Associate Professor of Internal Medicine at the Department of Medicine of the University of Padova. I work in the Padova University Hospital in a large com center for obesity management. I work uh, both in clinical and in research since many years. My focus was obesity and is obesity. And uh, I am now the president of the Italian Obesity Society. And I, I am, first of all, a big friend of my co-chair, <laughs> Dr. Dichter. Please, Dr. Uh, thank you, Luca. My name is Dr. Dr. Dichter. I'm head of internal medicine D and obesity clinic and com center in Hashaun Hospital, Abin Medical Center, affiliated to Sackler School of Medicine, Tel Aviv University. I'm also the president of the European Federation of Internal Medicine. And it's really rare to have such a friendship with a you know, colleague. Um, uh, and I really proud in my uh, friendship with Luca. And I think this uh, friendship really produce a very nice papers and actions in uh, the obesity management task force. Uh, thank you both so much. Um, I wanted to congratulate you on the recent European Journal of Internal Medicine focus for the past two months and in November as well. We have three feature articles on obesity in the Internal Medicine Journal, and it's a very well-respected journal. Can you tell us about how that came to be? So in my role um, in uh, the European Federation of Internal Medicine, we have um, the flagship, one of the flagship of the Federation is the European Journal of Internal Medicine. <clears throat> and I thought, <clears throat> sorry, and I thought that in the internal medicine world, obesity take part in most of our patients that are admitted to the hospitals. And we know that like 35% of our inpatients in the internal medicine departments in Israel are diabetic. And the same percentage are obese patients. So I thought that it's um, really important and necessary to bring the knowledge of obesity to the internist. And we sat with Luca, <clears throat> we sit with Luca and tried to really thought how we can tackle um, these issues of obesity that will be interesting and informative for internists. So we created a series of paper um, with Professor Agnelli <clears throat> that really tackle obesity from many other aspects, not just the pathophysiological. Like we have um, two seminal papers on the stigma and the attitude for obesity. We have papers on the uh, correlation or connection between sleep and obesity, taste and obesity. Look at a seminal paper on metabolic adaptation and, and pathophysiology of obesity. And we will have a, a paper on the future pharmacotherapy, which is very, very interesting. And I think um, a very important and seminal um, issue is the new uh, acceptance and the knowledge and the notions of the contribution of physical activity to obesity and treatment. And working with Luca on this was uh, really important because the internists in Europe are 50,000 physicians from 33, 35 countries. But to bring such a, a, a comprehensive papers and knowledge on obesity was very important for us. Luca, what, what do you think about this? Yeah, I completely agree, Dror. And uh, I'm very happy that with your help as a president of the uh, Internal Medicine Society, we succeed in having these uh, uh, um, important uh, 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 presentation in the, in, the, in the journal of the society. And this is, of course, uh, a part of our continuous effort for raising awareness about obesity as a chronic disease, not only 
within our family or our group of obesity specialists, but outside of our group, because as you uh, uh, rightly mentioned, many of the patients that are cured by other for, for or other specialists or other chronic diseases, they are indeed persons with obesity. And the obesity frequently is the root of the complication or other diseases. So it's very, very important that our colleagues in internal medicine, but I hope in the future, even in other specialties, they are uh, uh, aware about the importance of obesity and they are aware of the new uh, possibilities that we have to treat obesity more efficiently now at for, for the future. So I, I agree with you that this is a very important work and a work that we will need to continue in the, in the future as EAs or members. Yes, in fact, what I saw until now, uh, the two uh, first papers on, um, on stigma and perception of obesity are the most downloaded papers uh, until now in a gym. So I think uh, there is a very much need and interest in uh, treating obesity in these cohorts of, uh, of physicians. And, and, and as you all know, we had um, two years ago, I think, um, the new guidelines for primary physician, which is also very much quoted and downloaded. Excellent work uh, by uh, um, co-partners in the primary physician and obesity management task force. And I think um, the next uh, um, try or the next cohort, a group of physicians that we should aim is the primary physician. Of course, they see the first, uh, they are the first to see the, the obese patients. And I think we will uh, think how to really um, compose such a project for the primary physician, uh, papers for the primary physician that will relate to their interest in their encounters with the, the people with obesity. In fact, what we saw is that one of the most important thing, if not the most important, is the discussion between the physician and the people with obesity. And this discussion can really uh, improve the knowledge, but also the attitude of people with obesity to the treatment. So the, the first discussion is crucial and I think we should really aim to have such a um, project for the primary physician. Yes, and I, I can add that maybe in the past, uh, other colleagues like the primary care physician of the internal medicine doctors, they are not so confident in, in talking about obesity because indeed they, they they feel that they can give to patients very little help. But now the situation is changed or are changing because we are more uh, 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 advancement in, in, in the treatment. So in, maybe we are now in the same situation in which our colleagues treating diabetes were 30 or 40 years ago when the, the therapy yeah. for type 2 diabetes was only diet and, and metformin. But now the, 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 the panorama is changing. So we will have uh, more and more effective drugs for treating obesity in the future than now. Yeah. I, I in think. The future. And this could, I think, could widen our, our possibility to treat uh, and to help our patients. And this should be uh, 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 and this is a very important message, message to convey to our colleagues. Absolutely. But what we found in, in the first two papers on Action IO is exactly this, what you mentioned, meaning that we found that the three D are the most important things in uh, the relationship between the physician and patients, meaning three D is the first one is discussion. 
you have to know how to discuss and you have to start discussion. You know, what we found is it, it takes on average six years between uh, people who are start to um, really deal with the obesity until they are discussing with, with the uh, physician. The second D is diagnosis. You have to put the obesity diagnosis in the working list of the patient. If you put it, you double the uh, chance to treat the patient. And the third D is direction to treatment. So as Luca uh, very rightful said, we have now the understanding and the tools to treat the patient much, much better, much better. You have the understanding of physical, the contribution of physical activity, the contribution of, um, of uh, pharmacotherapy and the combination with uh, the right diet. So I think now we understand much more um, a lot of because uh, Luca's uh, um, studies on metabolic adaptation and physical activity and pharmacotherapy. So as I mentioned before, we have very important, I think in the last group of three papers, we will have the physical activity and pharmacotherapy, which are seminal papers. And I really advise everyone to read them because this is the future treatment of obesity. So, Luca, can, can you really elaborate a little bit on your paper on the metabolic adaptation and maybe some words on the physical, uh, physical activity um, understanding for this excellent series of papers? Yes, uh, the paper was a collaboration uh, uh, with, in my group, the group of Rachel Bentham in London and the group of Jason Helford, uh, now in Leeds. And we, 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 we produce a, a review of the mechanism uh, uh, that can cause the, the weight regain in patients with obesity that is probably one of the most critical problems in obesity management, the, the, the weight regain. We know that it is relatively easy to obtain weight loss, but it's very difficult to maintain. So we 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 talk, we we wrote about the the uh, uh, gastrointestinal hormones that are part of the mechanism that can cause weight regain. Uh, we talk about the, the the metabolic adaptation, and we talk also about the rewarding mechanisms that are very important in in the psychological part of the problem in in uh, favoring weight regain. The, the paper uh, or on physical activity is a, a, a sort of a, a conversation of a, a, a very, very huge work that we did in the last uh, uh, year. Yes, uh, uh, convene a large group of people working on physical activity, and we review all the materials uh, for, for, for producing at the end a set of very clear recommendations about the role of physical activity in obesity management. This work has been published in Obesity Review this year. And with the help of she Ryan here, we produced a very nice, uh, two very nice infographics, uh, one for uh, the patients and one for the clinician that clearly uh, said what are the role of physical activity and what kind of physical activity we should prescribe or we should do if we are patients for, for, for having the benefits that we can have. So I think that this, 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 this work on physical activity is very important because I, I, I am sure that many uh, uh, colleagues would benefit from this very clear and simple infographics that can be shared with the patients. So uh, the prescription of physical activity can be do and should be do. And we are, we're hosting a webinar series actually on the physical activity supplement. And that will be held November 18th and December 2nd. And sign up information is available on the ASO website. Yeah. Thank you both very much. Yeah, thank you uh, for all your efforts, Shirin, because I think we are progressing to the area that obesity become evidence-based medicine. You know, in the past, we have a lot of uh, um, perception and beliefs and, and 
that really was not really evidence-based and what we saw in this um, huge project of physical activity we don't have a lot of evidence-based in, in physical activity and and this is the importance of all these papers that really um, find what we have evidence and what we don't have evidence and generally i think that obesity uh, uh, medicine become much more based medicine and this is the uh, this is the importance of all these webinars and papers and, and, and publication to really bring the level of evidence in obesity medicine to a higher level. Yes. That's great. And that is a great place to conclude our conversation. Thank you so much for taking time and talking about the series. We're looking forward to the November edition and we're also looking forward to the next collaboration, perhaps with the general right. practice community. Absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you both very much. Thank you very much.